What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to build out our convolutional neural network for PyTorch and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to build out our convolutional neural network. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we sort of imported all the stuff that we're going to need. We created a little transform, and then we set up our training data and our test data. So in this video, we want to start to build out our convolutional neural network. Now, we're not going to actually create the model in this video. Instead, we're going to walk through it step by step, and we're going to code out all the individual steps, and I'm going to explain all those individual steps because there's a lot of stuff going on here, and if we just create the model, you're not going to really understand what's going on behind the scenes. So this way we'll be able to sort of walk through and we're going to take like one image from the MNIST data set and send it through a convolutional layer then a pooling layer, then another convolutional layer. And we're going to take it step by step. And so you'll see exactly what we're doing and sort of why. So hopefully you'll be able to take all that information. And then in the next video, when we build out the actual model to sort of automate all of these things, not just one image, it'll all make a lot more sense. So come down here and underneath where we set our test data in the last video, we need to create a loader for our data. And when you're doing this, the thing here is to determine the batch size. So when you're dealing with images in a convolutional neural network, you want the batches to be sort of small, small sets of images. Two, four is kind of common. I think in this video, we're going to go 10, just because, I don't know, 10 sounds good to me. And a lot of times you'll just play around with this number and you'll run it different ways and see how it changes the data. And you'll get a sense of what's good, you know, uh, but it's always going to be small. So let's create a small batch size for images. And I don't know, let's say 10, right? So let's create a train underscore loader. And this is going to equal a data loader. This is a function. Now this data loader, we imported that right here. So that's why we can use that. And inside of here, we want to pass in our train data. And then we need to set the batch size. So let's go batch underscore size, and let's set that equal to 10. And then finally, let's shuffle, set that equal to true. We want to shuffle these images. So that's our train loader. Let's go ahead and copy this and paste it again. And we want another one for our test loader. So obviously, this is going to be test data, which is, you know, this stuff here. And the batch size is 10. The shuffle is going to be false. We don't actually want to shuffle our testing data. We just want to shuffle the training data. So all right, that looks good. Let's shift enter to run that guy. Uh oh, misspelled shuffle. S H. There we go. All right. So we're good there. Now let's define our convolutional, well, let's just say convolutional neural network model. So like I said, we're not actually going to create it in this video, we're going to sort of describe the convolutional layer and the pooling layer and show you what's going on. So here, I'm going to write describe convolutional layer, and what it's doing. And for us in this example, we're going to have two convolutional layers. And like I said, this is just an example. In the next video, we'll build out the actual model. Here, we want two convolutional layers, right? So I'm going to call this CONV1 and CONV2 for convolution one and convolution two. And this is going to be a neural network dot conv 2 d. And so this is a convolutional network of two dimensions. And when we sort of hover over here, we can see this is asking for a lot of inputs here. So we want uh, an input and an output. So an input layer and an output layer, then we want a kernel size, remember our little kernel, our filter that we drag across. And then as we drag it across, that's the stride or the step length, right? So it's asking for basically four things here, input, output, kernel size, and the stride length. And if you don't know what any of those things are, watch the previous couple of videos. We explained all about kernels and filters, same thing, and striding them across the images to transform and do all kinds of things. So let's say we want an input size of one, we're just going to do one for this video, right? One image. For our first convolutional layer, we want six filters or outputs feature maps. And then our kernel size is going to be three, three by three. And we want to step it or stride it across just one at a time, right? So one, six, 
311. So we can go ahead and copy this guy, bring it down here, paste it again. For our second convolutional layer, this is gonna, we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna start out with six inputs. Why? Because we have six outputs in our first layer. So those six outputs will become our six inputs for the next convolutional layer, right? Makes sense? So six inputs, the outputs are gonna be 16. And again, I'm just kind of making up this six and 16. You're gonna play around with these numbers and see what works out best for your model. But for now, just kind of go with this. It's six and 16. And then here we want the same three kernel size or filter size, and we wanna step it across one still. So, so six, 16, three, and one, one, six, three, three. So, all right, that looks good here. Go ahead and shift in and run this guy. So now let's just grab one of those MNIST records. So let's say grab one MNIST record, which is an image, right? I guess we could say image here, right? And to do that, we're gonna loop through all of our data. So let's go for I in, and we're gonna go on the X underscore train data and the Y underscore train data in, and then we want to just enumerate over our training underscore data. And then here we want to break. So if we shift under to run this guy, so we can see exactly what this spit out here. So we can look at our X underscore train. And when we do, it's gonna be this gigantic tensory looking thing. And if we look at the shape of this, shift enter to run this, we see it's one by 28 by 28. So this is one image, right? And it's the size of 28 by 28. That's the size of our, our image the MNIST data images, right? 28 by 28 pixels. So, all right, that looks good. So basically we've pulled out one of these images and here we've got it. So, all right, so far so good. So here, this is basically still our 1D or our 2D image. We wanna change this into a 4D batch. So let's go X equals, and let's take that X underscore train and then dot view this guy. And we want this to be a one by one by 28 by 28. So now we've got four dimensions. It's one batch of one image of 28 by 28 size, I guess, right? So, oops, misspelled train, capital T. All right, there we go. So now let's perform our first convolution. So let's go X equals F dot R-E-L-U, which is rectified linear unit for the activation function, rectified linear unit, R-E-L-U, right, okay. And then inside of here, we want to run our conv one, which is, remember, this guy right here we just defined. And inside of there, we wanna pass in that X that we just sort of created. So here, if we want to type rectified linear unit for our, our activation, functions. If you want to Google any of these things, if this isn't sounding familiar to you, but remember this F right here, we imported that up here, torch nn.functional as F. And all right, shift enter to run this guy. All right, that looks good. Now let's see what we have here. We can just look at X, it's not going to tell us a whole lot here, but then we can X dot shape, shift enter to run this. And we see we have a torch of size one by six by 26 by 26. Now, this is sort of important to understand what's going on here. So now the convolutional layer has been run, and this is what we have sort of on the other side of it. We've got this one by six by 26 by 26 thing. So what is this? Well, the first one is we have, we know one single image, right? That's what we're doing in this whole video. We're taking one image and the MNIST. So the first one there is the one image. And then the six is the filters we asked for, right? Remember in our convolutional layer up here, we said, hey, do six of these things, right? Six feature maps, six filters. And then the 26 by 26 is now the image. Well, wait a second, it was 28 by 28. How come it's not 26 by 26? Well, up here when we defined our convolutional neural network, let me copy one of these things again. And let's see if we can, there we go, pop this thing back up. We have our input channel, we have our output channel, we have the kernel size and the stride. We can also set padding. And padding is around the outside of the image. And if you remember our MNIST data, if we come back over here and look up MNIST at Google, these images, the digit itself is sort of in the middle 
around the outside, there's not really anything. It's just nothing. There's no real data there. So what's happening is in our convolutional neural network, we didn't define any padding. And so the outer couple of pixels is getting dropped. And we don't really care because the good stuff's in the middle. So in this particular case, we can leave the padding off. And so it's going to drop some of that data. So the 28, see this 28 by 28 image, this is 28 by 28 pixels. It now shrinks a little bit. It becomes 26 by 26 because we didn't set the padding. If you were doing any other kind of real world thing, you would probably set padding because you wouldn't want to lose that information. But in this case, we don't really care. So we just leave it up, leave it off a little less computing power, all that good stuff. But that's why now it's a 26 by 26. So, okay, that's looking good. Now what? Well, we've got our convolutional layer. We've done that. And we remember our CNN, there's always a convolutional layer, then there's a pooling layer, then maybe there's another convolutional layer, then maybe another pooling. There might be convolution, 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 pooling, but there's always sometime a pooling. So let's do a pooling layer now. So let's go pass through the pooling layer. And to do that, we set our X here. X is the thing we've been working with, right? We're gonna be using X throughout this. And what we wanna do is set f dot max underscore pooling 2D. And if you shift enter here, you're not gonna really get any information. If you wanna know more about max pooling TD, uh, 2D, just Google CNN max pooling 2D and you'll get the uh, help page for that, but we don't really care right now. And what we wanna do is pass in our X and then we wanna say two by two. This two by two is gonna be the kernel size of two and a stride size of two. So let's say kernel, of two and stride of two. So shift enter to run this app, max pooling, max pool 2D, there we go. It's Monday morning. <laughs> so, all right, max underscore pool 2D, not max underscore pooling. So let's see what we got now. We've got, let's take X dot shape, shift enter to run this. And now we have a torch of a size one, six, 13 by 13. What's going on here? Well, one is still the one image, six is still our, you know, the same six is up here, which is, you know, what we define in a convolutional neural network. 13 by 13 is because here we set the kernel size and the stride length to two, right? So it's taking this 26 by 26 and it's pooling it. Remember, it's taking information away and shrinking it and it's doing it by two. So 26 divided by two is 13. So here, let's just say uh, 26 divided by two equals 13. We would expect that. Remember in the last video, we talked about pooling. You're, you're gonna lose some information. Things are gonna get smaller. So, okay, one by six by 13 by 13. And we've got our pooling layer done. So that's pretty much the process, right? We've done a convolutional layer. Now we've done a pooling layer. Remember we have now two convolutional layers. So let's uh, do our second convolutional layer. And it's just gonna be the same as the first time around, but you know, it'll be a good example of running through this again. So. Let's go X equals, and it's the same X, right? Because this is all linear. We're doing one convolutional layer, then a pooling layer, then another convolutional layer, maybe another pooling layer, but it's one after another. So it's the same X throughout, right? So X equals, and let's go again, F dot R E L U. And this time we want C O N V two, and we want to pass in our X. Now the C O N V two is of course, oops, get rid of this guy is this convolutional two neural network. Now these inputs are a little different. Remember we had six in the last one, that six output becomes the six inputs for our second layer. And instead of six for our second layer, we're doing 16 of these. We're gonna keep the kernel length the same and the stride length the same, but these two numbers are gonna be slightly different. So just sort of keep that in mind. So here we got F dot R E L U and this should be a big F, there we go. And it looks good, shift enter to run this guy. And again, we can X dot shape this to see what's going on. And we see now the same image of one. We've got features of 16, because remember up there we defined 16. And then now it's 11 by 11. Why is that? Well, again, 13 by 13, we didn't set any padding. So again, we're gonna lose those two pixels or one pixel around the outside that becomes on all sides, 11 by 11. So, all right, that looks good. So again, we didn't set padding, so we lose two pixels around the outside of the image. No big deal, that's what we would expect. 
After that, we need to then do another pooling layer, right? Why not? So let's go x equals f dot max underscore pool 2D, not max pooling 2D. And then again, same thing, we're gonna pass in that x and we're gonna set it to two by two again. If we run this, all right, that looks good. And again, we can see our x dot shaped, see what's going on here. Anyone wanna make a guess what's gonna happen this time? It was 11, 11, and we divided by two. Eh, any, any takers? It's gonna be five. Why is that? Well, because again, 11 divided by two equals 5.5, but we have to round down because you can't invent data to round up, right? So if we wanted to round up to six, we would need some image to do that. And we've deleted part of the image. We've lost data in the pooling. We can't then bring that data back. It's gone. So instead of rounding up, we just round down and that becomes five. These stay the same, one image, 16 feature maps, filters, whatever, and then 11 divided by two is five and five. So that's pretty much it. We've now done everything, right? We've taken one image, we put it through a convolutional layer, we put it through a pooling layer, then we put it through a second convolutional layer, and then we put it through another pooling layer, and this is what we have sort of output. Now, all we have to do now is sort of create a model to do this for all of our images, but when we do that, it's gonna do this every time. It's gonna take every image or batch of images and it's going to send it through this, this sort of system of convolution, pooling, convolution, pooling to get this final sort of image tensor thing. And again, this is five by five because originally our image size was 28 by 28, remember? And then we took that minus two, we lost that padding there, right? And then when we went to the pooling layer, we divided that by two and then we did our second convolution layer, so we lost another two to padding again. And then outside of that, we again divided by two for our final pooling layer. If we run this all up, it should be 5.5, sure enough. So that's basically it. That's We've run through our convolutional neural network with just one image. So hopefully that gives you an idea of sort of what's going on behind the scenes, what we're gonna be doing, what the convolutional neural network is. If we come back over here and just Google convolutional neural network and grab these images we've been playing with throughout this whole thing, Right, we start out with our image, we do some convolution, we do some pooling, we do some more convolution, we do some more pooling, and then now we're kind of here. We'll sort of pick up after this in the next video and start to build out the actual neural network model. But yeah, we are moving right along and uh, hopefully that wasn't too tricky. That's really not too bad when you break it down into each individual step like that. And uh, that's all for this video. And yeah, pretty fun. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, almost 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.